Good morning. We welcome you to the Daily Dynamite Devotional of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion this 19th day of August 2023. Let us pray. Eternal God, He that gives life and take it away, He that blesses, He that shows mercy to Him that He wills, thank you for this morning. Thank you for the graces you have provided. As we look into your word, may your word give us life and enable us to stand against the challenges of this life and the temptations of the devil. Thank you, precious Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The topic of our consideration this morning is generation of liars. Generation of liars. This is a very serious and important topic. Generation of liars, Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 1 to 17. Jeremiah chapter 9, 1 to 17. Oh, that my head were a spring of water and my eyes a fountain of tears. I would weep day and night for the slain of my people. Oh, that I had in the desert a lodging place for travelers so that I might leave my people and go away from them. For they are all adulterers, a crowd of unfaithful people. They make ready their tongue like a bow to shoot lies. It is not by truth that they triumph in the land. They go from one sin to another. They do not acknowledge me, declares the Lord. Beware of your friends. Do not trust your brothers. For every brother is a deceiver and every friend a slanderer. Friend deceives friend, and no one speaks the truth. They have their tongues to lie. They weary themselves in sinning. You live in the midst of deception. In their deceits, they refuse to acknowledge me, declares the Lord. They are four. This is what the Lord Almighty says. See, I will refine and test them. For what else can I do because of the sin of my people? Their tongue is a deadly arrow. It speaks with the seed. With his mouth, it speaks cordially to his neighbor. But in his heart, he sets a trap for him. Should I not punish them for this? Declare the Lord. Should I not avenge myself on such a nation as this? I will weep and wail for the mountains and take up a lament concerning the desert pastures. They are desolate and untraveled and the lowing of cattle is not heard. The birds of the air have fled and the animals are gone. I will make Jerusalem a heap of ruins, a haunt of jackals, and I will lay waste the towns of Judah so no one can live there. What man is wise enough to understand this? Who has been instructed by the Lord and can explain it? Why has the land been ruined and laid waste like a desert that no one can cross? The Lord said, it is because, the 13, verse 13, the Lord said, It is because they have forsaken my law, which I said before them, they have not obeyed me or followed my law. Instead, they have followed the stubbornness of their heart. They have followed the bows as their fathers taught them. Therefore, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. See, I will make these people eat bitter food and drink poisoned water. I will scatter them among nations that neither they nor their fathers have known, and I will pursue them with the sword until I have destroyed them. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Consider now. Call for the willing women to come. Send for the most skillful of them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our anchor verse is Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 5. Everyone will deceive his neighbor and will not speak the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies. They weary themselves to commit iniquity. From the text, Jeremiah vividly describes how giving to deception the leaders and the people of Judah where they lied with forethought, with skill, with power, and with intent. Their bent tongues sent forth arrows of lies. They lied with comforts. 
Lie has become an attitude. Generation of lies. Which generation have you found yourself? If you are classified, in which generation will you be classified? False confidence are false built on lies and deceit. That's false confidence. They are confidence built on lies and deceit. The Jews are the only nation in history with whom God has entered into a covenant relationship with. And you see that in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. And this is marked by the seal of circumcision in Genesis chapter 17. But the tragedy is that they twisted the covenant and the ritual to guarantee them acceptance before the Lord. Jeremiah had to deal with the pride of his people as he pointed out three obvious truths. Before we look at those three obvious fruits, truths, the Bible says that the devil is the father of lies. And may I remind you, if you lie skillfully, if you use your tongue to send arrows of lies, if you lie with so much comfort, remember the devil is your father. If lie has become an attitude, friends lie to friends. Brothers lie to brothers. People teach people how to lie. And you hear your friends tell their friends, don't worry, I'll tell you what to say. <laughs> don't worry, I'll configure something, I'll tell you what to say. Don't worry. I said, don't worry, I'm going to tell you what to say. And somebody will be a manufacturer of lies in this generation. No wonder this generation is so perverse that men not chop, breed lies against even themselves. Men breed lies even against their brothers. And they say there is nothing wrong with that generation of lies where will you be classified where will you be classified will you be classified as part of those who want the gospel to move forward or as part of those who use this lie to dislodge the strength of the gospel many problems in today's world are actually related to expression of truth because we have not told the truth and somebody will be punished wrongly someone who deserves freedom will be in jail because of lies someone who should be free will be in jail joseph went to prison because of false accusation do you lie if you lie then genuine repentance have not entered your heart life if you lie then you revolt against the word of god if you lie, you reject the word of God. If you lie, then you neglect the power of God unto salvation. If you lie, remember, don't forget, the devil will be or is your father. And when the devil is your father, definitely you will dine with him. And the end is destruction. So, Jeremiah pointed out three obvious truths. Number one, being God's covenant people is no excuse for sin. Because you are now a covenant child. Because you claim you are born again. And you think, you think you can walk into sin and come out. No, no, that's wrong. Because you claim you are now born again. Hyper grace, once saved, always saved. That you have given your life to Jesus. That whatever you do is now, can now be neglected. It's not going to work that way. Sin remains sin. That you are covenanted, that you are, you are a covenant people, does not mean that sin has left you. He runs around, any opportunity he enters. Sin enters, any opportunity enters. That's one truth we must know. Sin does not leave us and run away. He is around, looking for opportunity to strike. And with the slightest opportunity, it enters. No wonder you see people regretting themselves every day, every time. Look at Psalm 139. Psalm 139, verse 23 and 24. Psalm 139, 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Verse 24. 
See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. The psalmist knows. The psalmist knows. The psalmist is examining himself to be sure that he is clean. Can I ask you a question, brother? Can you make that prayer that psalmist make down? Search me, O oh Lord, and see if there is any wickedness in me. Or has lie become, become an attitude for you? Everything that comes out of your mouth, there will always be lie. Number two, in the three truths we want to expand now, being God's covenant child is no excuse from judgment. Because you are the son of a leader. Therefore, when you do something wrong, you will not be judged. Because you are the son of, of, of a pastor. You will not be judged for something that is wrong. You are exonerated. Because you are God's covenant child, you are exonerated from being judged for something you did. No way. And verse 7 to 16 also shows that in the scripture where we read. To whom much is given, if you are the child of a leader, you must show an exemplary life. To whom much is given, much is expected. Luke chapter 12 and verse 48. Luke 12 verse 48. Let's look at Luke 12 verse 48. But the one who does not know and does things deserving punishment will be beaten with few blows. From everyone who has been given much, much is demanded. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. Child of God, it doesn't matter how hard it could be as genuine believers. Let what proceeds from your mouth be the truth. When you are entrusted, when people see you as a child of God, everything that comes from your mouth must be true. No matter how difficult it means to say them. No matter how hard it could be to say. Everything, every word that must flow from your mouth must be the truth. Don't join the bandwagon. And that, uh, that, is, how, that, that is not the way it should be done. Don't join that bandwagon to commit immorality with your lips. Don't be afraid to raise your voice to say the truth when it is needed. It could be difficult, but most assuredly, it is possible. It could save someone from trouble. So, much is expected from you as a child of God. No filthy word should proceed from your mouth. That is the word of God. No filthy word should, be, should proceed from your lips. No filthy word should come from your mouth. Lie should not be seen anyone near you. The third point, we have considered that being a covenanted child of God, is no excuse for sin. Number two, being God's covenant people does not exempt you from judgment. Number three, being God's covenant people is no assurance that you have all spiritual understanding. Paul says, I die daily. You must seek wisdom that you are God's covenant child. Because of that, you don't need to study because of that. You no, no, no way. It's not going to work like that. You seek for understanding. You seek for wisdom. And when you seek wisdom, when you get it, it will be shown, it will be replicated with the words that come out from your mouth. You must seek wisdom and you must get it. Note, no amount of power, education, and wealth can guarantee you the blessings of God. If your lips pours out lies, if you are known as a liar, I bet you you are not guaranteed of the blessings of God. No matter who you are, who you are wherever you come from, no matter your educational background, no matter your, your financial status, no matter the power you occupy, if the things that leave your mouth are lies, get ready. The lies that you built up for somebody today will speak against you tomorrow. The lies that you manipulate for somebody today will stand in judgment against you tomorrow. Are you in that bandwagon, in that generation of lies? Are you in that crowd that the things that leave their lips is lies? Are you in that crowd 
that speaks venom with their lips. When you lie, someone is punished and you are happy. What wickedness. When you lie, someone is weeping and you are happy. What kind of wickedness. And in the days of Jeremiah, where we read in Jeremiah chapter 9, the Bible clearly puts it. In verse 13, Jeremiah chapter 9, look at verse 13. The Lord said, It is because they have forsaken my law, which I said before them. They have not obeyed me or followed my laws. When we forsake the laws of the Lord, lying becomes an attitude. When we forsake the laws of the Lord, lying against someone becomes a normal thing. Becomes, becomes a way of life. And there is punishment for every liar. Of course there is punishment. Look at verse 16. I will scatter them among nations that neither they nor their fathers have known. A liar will be scattered amongst all nations. Neither they nor their father will know. And I will pursue them with the sword until I have destroyed them. So, a liar will be destroyed someday and very soon. Why don't you quit? Why don't you repent? Why don't you throw away that lying tongue? That venom that pours out and pours into the hearts of men and poison men. Why don't you stop? Of course you have not repented because when you repent, you know. You see young people say, I have repented, but lying. Ah, I need to stop lying. Something is wrong. Genuine repentance have not taken over. John chapter 8 and verse 43. We must examine ourselves. We must also exclude ourselves from this quality of people. Look at John chapter 8 verse 43 and 44. Why is my language not clear to you? Because you are unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil. And you want to carry out your father's desire. Remember that the devil is the father of liars. He was a mother from the beginning, not holding to the truth. For there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language. For he is a liar and the father of lies. When the devil lies, he speak, what is the native language of the devil? That is what you speak when you lie. Who wants to turn to the Lord? When he lies, he speaks his native language. What a wicked, what a wicked devil. What a wicked devil. And until we begin to ask ourselves reasonable questions if we are actually saying the truth or lying. Why is your language not clear to you? You belong to your father the devil. So if you are a liar, John chapter 8 verse 44 says you belong to your father the devil. And you want to carry out your father's desire, the desire of the devil. That's what you want to carry out. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth. For there is no truth in him. Bro, can we look at you and say there is no truth in you? Can your friend look at you and tell you to the face there is no truth in you? When you lie, hey, he speaks with his native language. For he is a liar and the father of all lies. He is the devil your father. Have you, been, have you been counted among the generation of lies like you have the generation of Issachar, the generation of Reuben? Have you been classified as a generation of lies? The Lord will touch somebody this morning. Integrity is telling myself the truth. Honesty is telling the truth to other people. Integrity is telling myself the truth. Honesty is telling the truth to other people. 
Let us pray. We need to stand out for what the Father delights, which is the truth. We don't need to stand in for what the devil delights, which is lie. We don't need to stand in for the devil, which is lie. We need to stand out for our God, which is true. Heavenly Father, help us to live differently for your glory alone in this perverse world. Help us to say the truth at all times. As your children set forth today, may every word that comes out from their mouth be truth, because you are truth. Lead us by the power of the Holy Spirit today. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you. I hope you are blessed by the word. Join us tomorrow on the Daily Dynamite.